Hello there, this is John Frankwitz in the presidential series. Here is president number 11, James K. Polk. Look at that mullet that this guy has. Um, in my last video, I have to apologize. I mentioned that the 11th president would be Zachary Taylor, but he's actually number 12. President number uh, 11, James K. Polk, he is the most successful president that you've never heard of. It's very strange. I mean, this guy pretty much batted a thousand. He set out to do very few things and he did them. And when he got elected, he said he was going to serve one term and that was going to be it. Uh, a very admirable man. And uh, I'll talk about the reasons as why isn't he more famous? Nobody really talks about James K. Polk. But anyway, let's talk about him. He was born in North Carolina. His parents were Presbyterian. Now, here's an interesting thing. His father was a deist, but he never really had a religion, wasn't sure about Christianity. They used to baptize babies. They took James K. Polk to be baptized, his mom and dad. And the pastor said to the father, do you believe in Jesus Christ, et cetera, et cetera. The dad said, well, you know, I'm not sure about this Jesus thing. I do believe in God and blah, blah, blah. But he would not give in and tell the uh, pastor that, yeah, I believe in Jesus. So therefore, James K. Polk was not baptized. And in fact, he was not baptized until he was on his deathbed. And by that point, he became a Methodist. Okay, at 17 years old, he had urinary gallstones. They had to be removed. That must have been very painful. There was no anesthetic at the time. He married a woman named uh, Sarah Childress, and they never had children. I don't know if it had anything to do with the, the, with the surgery, but he became a congressman, and he spoke in the House. He supported Jackson, governor of Tennessee. And um, when he became president, uh, the White House was in disarray, so was the party, and he promised to serve only one term. I think the reason he did that was his party, the Democrats, they were, had so much commotion and chaos going around that by saying, I'm only going to serve one term, everybody else can settle in and say, let's wait for this guy to do four years, I'll run for president down the line or whatever. And it kind of unified the party, at least temporarily, and he decided to he would serve only one term, and he won. Now, when he won, he said he wanted to do four things. He wanted to reestablish the independent treasury system. He wanted to reduce tariffs. He wanted to acquire some or all of the Oregon country. He wanted to acquire California and uh, New Mexico. Um, if you're thinking he's an expansionist, he is. At the same time, we have to keep in mind that the Europeans wanted to take over some of this land, so he had a point there. Okay, he, he did all these four things. He batted a thousand. Now, uh, let's start with the first one. Um, to reestablish the uh, independent treasury system, it's not a very sexy thing. It's not like the War of 1812 or anything. Um, but what they did was they took the money out of local banks, they'd hold the money in the treasury, uh, and they set offices throughout the land to hang on to these treasury deposits. The next one, reduce tariffs. Tariffs uh, in the South. Tariffs would, all, would often hurt the South. He established a tariff, lower the prices, and keep them low, independent of the, the supply and demand. And this helped the South tremendously. Uh, the next thing he did, he wanted to acquire some or all of Oregon County. Now, for almost 30 years, all the presidents before him had tried to agree on a latitude between Canada and, Canada and the United States. Uh, he said, uh, James K. Polk said, 54, 54 degrees latitude, that from that point on, South belongs to the U.S., and the British said, uh, no, it was much lower than that. James K. Polk actually threatened war. And then the British came around and they agreed on 49 degrees. Now, some people felt betrayed by Polk because he said 54. Uh, others think that this was a political ploy, that he wanted 49 degrees all along. Point being is, he settled the question and the Oregon area was acquired and this latitude question was settled. Uh, he got California and New Mexico. This after Texas was an annexed, and some people give him the credit for that, but it was really, as I mentioned earlier, uh, John Tyler who started all of that. But anyway, he sent General Zachary Taylor out there uh, to deal with skirmishes that were going on with the Mexican. Let's just say the war broke out with Mexico, and we won. We won and we acquired a lot of land. I mean, uh, I could say here, look, look at this list. California, Nevada, Utah, uh, most of New Mexico, Colorado, and Wyoming were acquired after this Mexican War. Uh, besides all of this, one thing that he tried to do was buy Cuba. Can you imagine if Cuba had been part of the United States, how different a lot of our history would have been? Imagine that. Uh, he opened a new Department of the Interiors. He oversaw the Smithsonian Naval Academy. 
Uh, he worked very, very hard. He almost never went on vacation. And when he was done in the White House, he went back home and he was very old looking and very sick. And three months after leaving the White House, he died. Uh, he had signed a will that his slaves would be freed after his wife's death. But however, his wife lasted another 42 years. By that point, the Civil War had occurred and the slaves were free. Anyway, uh, now, why is it that, oh, some things that happened during his presidency. The first baseball game was played. Uh, the first women's rights convention was held in New York. Karl Marx uh, publishes his manifest. The first Chinese arrive in New York and settle Chinatown. And uh, besides the territory that I mentioned, he acquired uh, Wisconsin and parts of, I sorry, Wisconsin and Iowa joined. So anyway, that is pretty much it with uh, James K. Polk, a man, a man, a very accomplished man that deserves a lot more credit than he's gotten. Our next president, president number 12, General Zachary Taylor. He's a funny, duddy, strange man. We'll talk about him. But in the meantime, comment below, or better yet, subscribe. Thank you. This is John Franklis.